Hello FPO managers and welcome back for another video. My name's Jack and today we're discussing our team selection thoughts for Game Week 26. We are planning on making a couple of changes to the team for a hit. If you guys are enjoying the FPL videos, drop a like and subscribe as it really does help out the channel. And if you guys don't want to miss any future FPL videos regarding double and blank Game Week content, just click the notification bell as well. It uh, keeps you guys up to date with all of our upcoming videos. And with that being said, let's jump into the video. So first of all, let's have a look at how the team has got on so far in Game Week 25. At the minute, we're on 44 points. We've taken a minus four hit this week to get in a couple of players. Uh, we have currently taken a red arrow down to 1.1 mil. We were just sitting outside the top 1 million before this game. It's obviously not the best season for us so far, but with a lot of double Game Week players still to play in Ramsdale, White, Bueno, Salah, and Odegaard, I am hopeful for a green arrow. So this is still quite a few double Game Week players especially if Arsenal do get that clean sheet here as as you can see double Arsenal offense with Ramsdale and White they produced the goods in the first fixture of their double game we're getting a clean sheet away to Leicester with a very low xgc of just 0.02 so that was definitely good signs to see that the Arsenal were defence bounce back after a few consecutive weeks of no clean sheets. And also with Everton at home, I think this is slightly uh, a slightly easier fixture than Leicester away, as despite Leicester's poor uh, form in general this season, they have still managed to score goals. So with this Everton attack uh, being slightly worse than Leicester's in my opinion, and since Arsenal are also playing at the Emirates, I think they do have a decent chance of a clean sheet in this game. And hopefully Ben White does get the nod ahead of Tomiyasu as well, as that could be a potential rotation risk. Otherwise, as far as the other players still to play, Bueno, I'm not too hopeful for Liverpool away. Obviously, a very tricky fixture. And we do have Salah in the same game as well. And I really am going to rely on Salah here for a goal in this match. As, of course, Saka, another very popular captaincy option. He's got a similar captaincy rate to Mo Salah this game week. And since Erling Haaland did produce 10 points as the most captain player, I really am going to need Salah to at least try and match Haaland. And if he does get a goal, you have to assume he picks up 7 points. Points. Plus, if Liverpool get a clean shoot, that's an extra bonus point there. Plus, hopefully, Salah could hop on bonus as well. So, I am really going to need an attacking return from Salah in this fixture. And Odegaard, the other Arsenal asset still to play here. He's got Everton home, which is a really, really good fixture from an attacking perspective. I think I am going to be holding my breath in this game, praying for no Saka returns, whilst hoping Arsenal get a clean sheet and Odegaard gets on the score sheet. But otherwise, pretty decent gaming for us so far. Uh, so far. Really happy with Oli Watkins. Got himself a goal as the new signing to the team. And obviously, double Arsenal defence paid off with each of Ben White and Rams so picking up clean sheets so with that in mind let's have a look at some transfers that we're looking to make and then have a look at our Game Week 26 side so coming into Game Week 26 we do have one free transfer available obviously we took a minus four hit last week we made two transfers we only had one available last week so took the minus four we're looking to do the same again this week and making two transfers but after a recent injury concern, we may only drop it down to one. And as you can see here, that's the first transfer we're looking to make in Mares down to March. I think March is going to be a great player to have in the size, especially with Brighton's couple of double game weeks coming up in game week 27 and 29. I think Brighton are a side to target, especially in uh, double game week 27, where they have a really, really good double game week with a great couple of fixtures here. Also, as you can see, dropping Mares down to March does free up a lot of money for us in the bank, which does allow us to have extra fix. Uh, flexibility down the line and make a couple of other upgrades to the team. For me, Maros and Akanji are two Man City assets, just aren't getting enough minutes. They were quite good when we first initially had them in the team on the wild card, but since then they haven't really been able to produce too much in the way of just last couple of games getting rotated or not providing returns when they've been on the pitch. Especially Akanji last week was very frustrating to see him not get a clean sheet for Manchester City. Very unfortunate there with a really good fixture against Bournemouth. He couldn't get the job done. And Maros does seem to be getting uh, more and more rotated, especially with Champions League now as well well that is uh, where he's going to have his minutes prioritized it seems to be according to Pep and this is typically what it's like uh, in previous seasons Morris does play a lot of Champions League minutes compared to Premier League minutes and March, a player in really, really good form. Got some great chances in Game Week 24. Had a disallowed goal, plus created some great chances for his teammates. A great fixture in Game Week 26 of West Ham at home as well. Plus that double that I touched on in Game Week 27 and the double in Game Week 29. Brighton do have a pretty good chance of blanking in double Game Week 28, but we'll find out more about that with some FA Cup fixtures to be played tomorrow. That'll give us a bit more information regarding blank Game Weeks in the uh, future. And that does leave us with 5.5 in the bank uh, once we make this 
this transfer, add another one which we will discuss, which is the second move that I'm looking to make in Bamford up to Tony. I think this upgrade is definitely worthwhile. We brought in Bamford on a wild card when Leeds had that double game. If we were really looking to target uh, getting a Leeds attacker in, it was originally going to be Rodrigo, but when he got injured, we switched to Bamford. Really hasn't provided too much outside of an assist in Leeds double game week 22 fixtures. But uh, hasn't really done anything for us in recent game weeks in 23, 24, and 25. And now that Leeds have a trickier fixture run coming up and Bamford just doesn't seem to be putting in the goals, I think it's the right time to swap to Ivan Tony. He's got some great fixtures coming up. Fulham at home in 26, doubles in 27 with a really good double game week, doubles in 29 with a really good double game week as well. And also Brentford do avoid a blank game week 32, which is key for our future planning as we are looking to free hit in game week 28. So for now, those are the two trends transfers we're looking to make. If March is ruled out for Brighton, we'll have to see also who plays in the FA Cup for Brighton. That could dictate whether or not we're going to make the one transfer of Bamford to Tony, or we do go uh, with the two transfers for a hit of Mares to March and Bamford to Tony as well. So with these changes in mind, let's have a look how the squad lines up for game week 26. We've stuck with the double Arsenal defence, both are facing Bournemouth at home. And Batty Ashil does come in here against Leeds at home. He was originally dropped to the bench last week against Tottenham. Didn't actually get any minutes in this game for Chelsea. Slightly concerning. I'm not too uh, keen on the amount of rotation Graham Potter is doing to this Chelsea side right now. I think it's better if he just sticks with a solid starting 11. And it looked to be that Chelsea's defence was a lot more solid with Batty Ashil in defence. So hopefully this was just him getting a rest and he's back for this Leeds fixture which is a great chance for a clean sheet Leeds at home here for Chelsea and Kieran Trippier does get the nod ahead of a couple of other decent bench options in a Kanji Bueno and Andreas here despite having the tricky fixture of Manchester City I've just gone with form over fixtures here with Kieran Trippier as even when he's not getting clean sheets he's on so many set pieces and putting so many good balls into the box uh, looking to the midfielders obviously March is the sole change there in midfield he's got West Ham at home if March is ruled out and I'm still keen to get in a Brighton player for this West Ham fixture Matoma is probably going to be the other one that we get in if it's not not much, but for now, I'm hopeful that March can play here, and uh, he's got the nod. Uh, otherwise, Rashford comes back after the blank last week. He's got Liverpool away. Once again, a form over fixtures, and I think Liverpool's defence has not been the best recently. Despite increasing the clean sheet count, their expected goals conceded still hasn't dropped dramatically. It has been better in the last couple of games. But with Manchester United's good form, and especially Rashford's good form, he is going to take the vice-captain's armband. Mo Salah's got Manchester United in that same fixture. I'm hopeful for a Salah goal in this one, as we don't have any United defenders, and I think it's going to be key uh, for our rank increase for how to have Salah pick up returns, as he is one of the only two premiums that we have in the team right now. I'm really going to need him to start firing, especially when I'm paying at such a big price for him. And Odegaard rounds out the midfield with Bournemouth at home as well, completing an Arsenal triple-up, which is is looking very, very good for some returns in game week 26. Otherwise, the forward line I'm really happy with right now, Harland, Watkins, and Tony, three players that I'm massively keen on as far as forward options go right now. I think Watkins and Tony, two of the best players at around that 7 mil to 7.5 mil price bracket in terms of forwards that are in form with good fixtures coming up. Aston Villa avoid a lot of blank game weeks coming up plus double in 29 and as we touched on with Tony he's got two double game weeks coming up plus is a great chance of avoiding a blank game week 32 and Haaland does get the captain's armband against Newcastle at home. Quickly looking at the bench, Olsen remains the sub-keeper. Akanji's there against Newcastle. Bueno's got Tottenham. And Andreas Pereira faces, uh, faces Brentford away. And also looking at some team stats, we've got 5.5 left in the bank, which is a massive amount of money. But we'll be looking to make some upgrades to the squad and preparing our squad for a bench boost in double game week 29. And as I said there, we've taken a minus four hit for the team as well. Thanks for watching today's Game Week 26 team selection video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. And if you did, drop a like and subscribe. It really does help out the channel and pushes the video to more people. Also, to make sure you guys don't miss any future FBL videos, click the notification bell as well, as there's going to be lots more videos regarding blanks and doubles in the near future. With that being said, I'll see you guys in the next one.